and now we will learn how landlords would manage their chart of accounts. What is the chart of accounts? Well, in the days before the computer, the chart of accounts was called the general ledger. It was simply a notebook where each page in the book was a separate record of a different thing that the company had to account for. For example, page one was video income. That means every time they performed that particular service, they would write it down on page one. Page six was repair expense. That means every time they paid for that particular expense, they would write it down on page six. This way, they could get the total of page one and know the total video income they earned, and they could get the total of page six and know the total repair expense they had. Each page was called an account because it would account for the records of that item. Nowadays, we don't call it the general ledger. It's the same idea, but physically it's in the computer, so we call it the chart of accounts. So, an account is an individual record of transactions. You need an account for each bank account, credit card account, income source, and expense that your company has. You will need other accounts as well, but we'll address them in the course as they come up. The chart of accounts allows you to delete, edit, and add all the accounts in the chart of accounts window. And I'm going to show you each of these actions one by one. So first, we'll talk about deleting an account. Now, in order to open the chart of accounts window, we go to the main menu and click list, and the very top list is the chart of accounts. If we make the window a little wider, you notice that QuickBooks already put some accounts in the chart of accounts for us. Now mind you, your chart of accounts might not look the same. If you did not click other none when you set up the file, you might have a full chart of accounts because you accidentally chose a sample chart of accounts instead of clicking other none. If you clicked other none, you might have very few like we have here but they might be slightly different. Just keep in mind that I'm only going to delete this one or show an example of how to delete this very top one. So if you have accounts receivable and you want to follow along step by step, we'll only delete this one. But I can tell you all these others we're going to use, some of which I'm going to demonstrate with now. So just to show you how to delete an account, I'm going to click the top one where it says accounts receivable then at the moment that particular account is selected I go to the bottom left and click account delete account then I click OK and that account is gone forever okay now what about making an account inactive what does that mean well sometimes we can't physically delete an account for example if you already recorded a transaction in a particular account and you did not delete that transaction, and that account still has transactions recorded in it, QuickBooks will not let you delete that account. It will also not let you delete these two payroll-related accounts that QuickBooks automatically puts, even though we're not using QuickBooks for payroll. So for something like this, if I click Payroll Liabilities and I click Account Delete, it doesn't let me because it's connected to something related to payroll. Same thing with this, payroll expenses. Click on it, account, delete, it won't let you do it. So the only way to remove accounts from your list in order to not let your account list get cluttered up is to make them inactive. Click on the account you wish to make inactive, go to the bottom left and click Make Account Inactive. Now it looked like it disappeared, but it really didn't. Let's try it again with the payroll expense. Click on it account make account inactive now it seems like it's gone forever but we simply removed it so it didn't clutter up the list well what if we want to see the accounts are inactive or even bring them back no problem 
We can click this little button here to say include inactive accounts. And notice when I click the check mark here, the other two show up, but they have an X next to them. That indicates that they are still inactive. We could always right click or click in the bottom left and click make account active and the X goes away. This way when we remove the check mark you can see they're still there when we're not including inactive accounts. So it's the same thing with this one as well but I'm going to keep this inactive because I don't want payroll accounts cluttering up our list and then I will remove the check mark here. And finally, we're going to add accounts to the chart of accounts. Now, this is the sample chart of accounts that we will use for this course. Most of them are in capital letters. I suggest you put them in with capital letters. This way, your eyes can clearly distinguish between the accounts that we put ourselves and the accounts that QuickBooks put automatically. Notice it has both account name and account type for each of the accounts that we're going to put. Now, account name can be anything you want as long as you know what that means. You can spell it any way you want, but keep in mind, whatever you type in for account name is exactly the way it will show up on any of the QuickBooks reports. But regarding account type, you have to be very careful that you choose the correct type. Now, please note, Account type in QuickBooks is not the same thing as account type when studying accounting theory. Account type in QuickBooks simply determines how it behaves in the software as we use it. Please view the supplemental video about called Defending the Method, which means I will explain why the account types are the types that I have chosen in order to get the file to work properly, specifically for a property manager or a landlord. So please watch that supplemental video, and in the meantime, please cooperate along with what we request that you do when we ask you to put the specific account types for the specific names. So here we are again with the names and the types, and we're going to put these on the list one by one. Again, we could reopen the chart of accounts from the main menu, list, chart of accounts, and again, the bottom left button of every list window controls the list. So we click account new. Now the first account is a bank type of account, then we click continue, and then with the cap locks on, we type in cash in bank, cash in bank, okay? Notice, by the way, if we click the pull down here, we get every possible account type. So that previous window we saw a second ago before we came here, that's only for the first one if you're putting on a list. If we click Save and New, notice the account shows up here as the name that we typed as well as the type and then the uh, window is waiting for us to put in the next one. If you accidentally close the window and you reopen it, account new, you would then have to choose the type over here again before getting to the other window. I guess the next one is unearned rental income and the type is accounts receivable. So we can come down here and click account receivable. That's another way of designating the account type. And then click continue and then type it in here with capital letters, accounts receivable. I suggest you click save and new because that will clear the screen and keep the window open so that you could type in the next one. But when you click save and new, notice it got added to the list with the correct name and type. Let's do the next one. Holden's investment, and that's an equity type of account. So we go down to where it says equity and we type in Holden's investment. Okay, save and new. Go to the next one. Uh, oop, go to the next one. It's uh, Holden's withdrawals. Okay, and it's an equity type of account. Holden's withdrawals. Save and new. 
What's the next one? I think you get the idea. Skip the ones that QuickBooks already put. They're the ones in lowercase. Income from late fees. Well, we need that because we have to track all the money we earn specifically from late fees. So we choose income type of account and we type in income from late fees. And then we click save and new. Then we come here, type in inco rental income earned, which is a separate record of income that should be tracked separately, but it's also an income type of account. So we type in rental income earned, save and new. This way, the top of our profit and loss will show us the income both from late fees and normal rent, and then our profit and loss will subtract out each of these expenses. So the first one is cleaning expense. So we change this to uh, expense type, and we type in cleaning expense. Save and new. What's the next one? The next one is delivery expense. Save and new, and so on. I suggest that you pause the video and you finish putting in all the expenses after delivery expense. I'm going to pause the video and put it. Congratulations. You finished putting in the chart of accounts that we will use for the rest of the course.